Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our Investigate Running with Vernier video analysis webinar. Um, I'll be passing it on to our host, um, main presenter, John Melville, here, here in a moment. We also have Burrell Walters um, from our tech support area in the background to help answer questions. My name is John Melville. Um, I'm the director of biology at Vernier Software and Technology. My background is in biology and human physiology. Viral um, is one of our tech support specialists. He has a long uh, history of teaching uh, physics, math, thing, things like that. Um, my background, like I said, is predominantly in biology. I do have a PhD um, in zoology and then did postdoctoral work in neuroscience. Um, but I'm kind of a little bit of what I think most people at Vernier call a weirdo, meaning I like physics and I like biomechanics. So when I was a college professor at Wartburg College, I was constantly calling into Vernier and using Logger Pro uh, software that we had before we had Vernier video analysis to analyze all sorts of weird things, uh, rat swimming, um, running, all sorts of stuff. I just loved analyzing video. I also have a background in animal behavior. So I think that's why I gravitated to it. And I was just amazed at how powerful um, Logger Pro was when you're trying to analyze video because I had never done that before. And all of my physics friends were like, oh yeah, we know that it can do all that. That's not surprising. So what I wanted to talk about today was Vernier video analysis. So um, does anybody there already know Vernier video analysis? Have you used Vernier video analysis before? I'm gonna share my screen. Just, just go ahead and put a little note in the chat, say yes or no or something like that. Never used, great. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And can everybody see my screen? Great. All right, so it looks like some people have extensive use with Veneer Video Analysis and some people have never used it. I just wanna briefly go over what Veneer Video Analysis is and then I'll get into analyzing a video for something, uh, for analyzing running. So Vernier Video Analysis is software. It's a progressive web app. That means it can run on anything. So it can actually, it runs in a browser and it can run on an Android device. It can run on an iOS device, tablet, phone, computer, Chromebook. So I like to use the, the term, it's um, device agnostic. It can run on anything. All that you need to do to get it to run is you need to have a link. Um, it's also a site license. So if you look on the Vernier webpage, which is what I'm showing you for Vernier video analysis, you can see that you can purchase a site license for Vernier video analysis. We have different pricing for college and K through 12 schools. And that pricing is based on how big your school is or your college department is. Really it's the number of unique students that are going to be using it. Um, now it is a site license, so it works for an entire year. And it expires in June uh, from the year that it is purchased. So the uh, it will expire um, June 31st, June 30th, uh, 2022. The license expires July 1st, 2022. Um, so if you were to buy it now, it would be good until July 1st, 2022. That doesn't flex or move at all. So if you were to buy it in December, it's still going to expire. July 1st, 2022. Now, if you go uh, to the website, you can get a free trial. And I just wanted to let you know that that's a great thing to do. That free trial works for 30 days. You can use it with your students. It's fully functional. Um, I'm gonna give you a link to be doing this as well. So you can follow along when we actually analyze some video. But if you wanna get your own 30 day trial, just fill this out and submit, and then you'll get an email with the link. Um, Fran, who is the director of physics, put together a beautiful video um, right here that explains all about how to get started with Vernier video analysis. So if you get that free trial, you can, you can go there. All right. So um, you should, in the chat, be given access to a folder. Hold on there. Sorry, I'm just, I just saw a note. Oh, there we go. Angie just put in um, a Google Drive folder and I just wanna show you what's in the Google Drive folder. If you, um, so if you look in chat, Angie just dropped in a link to the Google Drive folder. 
And in that Google Drive folder is a video. Um, and then I've put in here um, instructions for um, analysis of running and the instructor um, notes for analysis of running and some other important links. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna be going through very briefly is an activity that is in our new book for near video analysis, motion and sports. And this book is designed to be used with Vernier video analysis. And if you tap on the table of contents, it has 12 exercises. Most of them are what I would call straight up physics activities, but a few are sports related like analysis of running, which is just where we're gonna analyze uh, running of an individual, look at their mean velocity, acceleration, look at stride length, things like that. For those of you that teach IB, um, if you wanted to look at drag, remember there's refining the air drag model here. But we, I also made sure to add in this activity, which is analysis of running with resistance, which I think is really neat because what we do is we have the same individual running, only they sprint with no parachutes on, and then they sprint with a series of parachutes on. And then you can see that they slow down when they're, they're trying to run with parachutes. All right. so. There is a sample download that's available, projectile motion. Um, what's included is, is really cool. I can actually uh, show that to you. Um, if you. If you actually go under our website and get an account, once you get this book, you get access to um, not only all of the paper documents, like the digital, um, the instructor's editions for each lab and the teacher notes, you also get access to video. So I'm actually gonna be uploading individual videos that you can be using for these activities. Questions so far before I launch into um, Vernier video analysis? Are you sure? Okay, great. I, I just want to ask questions because as an old college professor, I can talk forever. So please ask questions. Feel free to, add, to drop them in the chat. Varel and I are looking at them and we'll be able to answer your questions. So what is, let's just take a look. Oh, that's the next thing I wanted to add. Sorry, I'm getting a little excited. There's a really cool article. So if you go into the folder and you click on this Google doc, which is investigating running with Vernier, you'll see that this has, um, the webinar. This is the free trial code. So if you if you actually highlight uh, that link right there and drop it into your browser, you will launch for your video analysis. Here's the link for signing up for the free 30 day trial. Um, here's the link to the book. But what was uh, really fortuitous is um, it's the Olympics, right? And, you know, what I was really interested in when I wanted to analyze running was I wanted to compare how different people run at different speeds. And what's beautiful is the New York Times um, just released an entire piece on how Olympic athletes run. So why don't we just take a look at that really quickly so I can show it to you because I think that this piece from the New York Times would be a beautiful thing to have students watch, review, look at, and then go and do this activity. And I really didn't plan it. This really just came out just yesterday. So this is from the New York Times. It's called Running Fast versus Running Far. And they use this amazing treadmill to analyze the motion and forces of individuals running. It's um, a great piece. I'm not going to turn the sound on. But they look at how three different Olympians run. Um, an incredible sprinter, a mid-distance runner at the 800 and then a marathon runner. And what you could probably guess is the marathon runner tends to run at a slower pace, slower mean speeds. Um, the person running the 800 is in the corner of this curve. So they're running really, really pretty fast, not super fast, but it makes it really painful. Whereas the top sprinters and the 100, 200 meters are running exceedingly fast. And then what's great about this um, video this piece on New York Times is it goes through the um, what's going on when a person is running, the amount of force that they put into the ground, how if you are a sprinter, you are delivering a tremendous amount of force into the ground, 
Whereas if you are a marathon runner and you're jogging, you're, it's all about economy. So you're not going to be providing a bunch of forces into the ground. So it, it goes through all of that. One of the other things that it does, I'm just going to scroll ahead. It's, it's just a really great piece that shows you all of these things graphically. It talks about how sprinters are in the air most of the time. So their feet are not on the ground as much. Whereas if you're um, a marathoner, you're gliding across the ground you're not hitting the ground as hard. So they go into ground time and aerial time. These are the um, force curves here. I just wanted to get at stride length because that's something that we were gonna look at really briefly. So remember that if you're running really, really fast, you're going to be covering more strides. Your stride rate should increase. That's the total number of steps that you're taking. But what's interesting is for um, really well-trained athletes and runners that are sprinting, stride length should also increase. So they're showing you the stride length here in this video. So this is Gaither, who is the sprinter, and they're showing you her sprint distance. It's about 6.7 feet. And then here is the sprint, the stride length of the marathon runner. And they're gonna show it to you there. And they're showing his stride length is much shorter. What's interesting in this case is they're measuring stride length from one foot to the other foot. The way that we're going to measure stride length is looking from when the right foot goes all the way to the next foot. But I could show you how to analyze how they're looking at stride length if you wanted to as, as well. So any questions on that? This is just a beautiful New York Times piece that shows some videos that you could use. So let's actually go to Vernier Video Analysis and analyze um, some video. Now you can do this if you wanted to. You could take that link that I showed you there in, um, that's in the folder. And if you just copy this free trial code, it's going to launch. Um, don't, don't worry about the free trial ex it expires before you even start school. If, if you apply for another one later, it, you can get one that'll last for 30 days. Um, but you could be analyzing this video with me if you wanted to. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, so what, the first thing that you would do is it's gonna launch this web app. And then you're going to import some video to analyze. And there's already a whole bunch of videos that exist inside uh, Vernier Video Analysis. Um, but in this case, I'm going to insert a video. Sorry, this is. Yes, but you, yes, you. that's exactly what Viral said. Just get yourself a 30 day trial when you're ready to use it. Um, so I'm going to import some video. I'm gonna go outside. This is the folder that you get when you actually download. Does the video need to be in a specific format? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> most, it does need to be in a specific format, but it's worked pretty much really well with all of the standard uh, video formats that are out there. Yeah, MP4 generally works. All of these videos that you're seeing, I shot or my or a colleague shot on our iPhones. Um, there are ways to convert back and forth. There's some other experiments that we did with high-speed video, not, not for analyzing running that you can do, but pretty much MP4 seems, seems to work really well. So I'm just gonna go to the video folder here and I'm going to import jogging. Now, can everybody see this video pretty well? I mean, see the screen. Um, for those of you that have not used um, for your video analysis, I just wanted to explain to you that the, um, the graphs over here that you see are very much like graphical analysis. The, the, there's a table, there's a graph window, <clears throat> and you interact with all of these little spots here. <clears throat> now, what we like to tell people to do when you're looking at these videos is just have the students play the video and analyze it. Just, I mean, just look at it and take a look at it. So I'm just gonna play this video. This is my friend, Walter, jogging. 
Can everybody see him jogging there pretty well through the video? I'm going to, I'm going to increase the screen size a little bit. So it'll be easier to see if you go up here where it says view options, I'm going to turn off the graph and I'm going to turn off the data table. Great. And then let me just play that video again. So everybody can see that pretty well. That's just Walter sprinting. He's a friend of mine that I play soccer with. All right, so I'm going to go um, back to the beginning of the video. That's actually stepping, but let's go back to the beginning. So this button right here will bring us back to the beginning. And then these buttons allow me to step through the video so I can step the video forward. I can step the video back. Um, I also can change the frame rate for, for someone that's running, this might be way too much data to analyze. So if I click down here on this button under advanced video options, I can actually um, change the frame rate. So I'm gonna change this to five frames. So instead of stepping through every single frame, it's gonna go through five frames every time I step the video forward. So there's five frames. I mean, we could analyze every single frame. And that's something if you want to look at later, there's really cool things that you can do when you're analyzing individual frames. But um, let's just get going here. So I've got this video here. Now, what's really important here is I have put these two bars in this video. Each bar is two meters long. Um, yeah, I added the red, I added the red lines to the field and I'll zoom in. Those are just two by fours that I spray painted that are two meters long each. You can zoom in. So if you highlight over a region, you can zoom, you can zoom in to the area. But what I want to do first is I'm going to mark the red bar. And then uh, let me zoom in. I'm going to make this two meters. And then normally I should be able to zoom in. Let's go to, um, let me set the origin. I want the origin to be right back where his foot was. I also want this to be straight up and down, parallel. You can choose polar coordinates, but I'm going to keep it Cartesian. Uh, let's just see. Let's go to um, add. Oh, it's, I don't want that data point. So I'm going to go to edit. And I'm just going to bring it off here and release it, put it in the trash. So let's go back. Normally, if you hover over an area and you zoom in, you can actually zoom into an area and zoom out. I don't, I mean, it may just be that my fingers are, are not sweating because I'm a little bit nervous maybe, but you should be able to zoom in. But what I'm gonna do is, um, you can see that if under system, I have set the scale to two meters. I know that that's right about right. 140 pixels equals two meters. I've set the origin because we're just going to be looking at the x-axis. And then I'm going to wind up adding points. Let me just go forward here. Okay, there's the first time that Walter moves. There's his foot. Now, the other thing that I'm going to look at is there's a reason why I had Walter wear all black. And that's because I wanted to be able to track him easily. And what's really nice is he has this little teeny white stripe um, on his uh, sweats and he has a, a little white sock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap right there and then it's gonna automatically go through the video. So we'll just start there. Object one already has a point on the frame. Now let's just start over, hold on. File, new experiment, don't save. I'm gonna import video. Let's start over with jogging. There we go. I'm going to, let's see if I zoom in. There we go, now I can zoom in. So there is a way to zoom in and zoom out. I'm gonna put the system on here. Let's mark that bar. You can zoom in, pinch, pinching, zooming and zoom out. Um, I know that it's right around 140. 
So if you zoom in, you could see that it should be right at 140 pixels. There we go. And most importantly is to change it to two meters. And then let's change this to every, let's do every two frames. It can be two to five, it doesn't matter. And then I'm just gonna forward this. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna look right where his leg begins to move. So I'm gonna mark right at his waist and I'm just going to, um, oh, let me set the origin again, origin. And by grabbing the X here, I can move it and make sure it's parallel. So I'm gonna mark his waist. It goes to the next frame, the next frame, the next frame. Maybe I should have made it five. Yeah. I can zoom in here. So take a little longer than I wanted to, but it should work. Other questions while I'm just marking data points? This is probably one of the things that probably most students would find annoying is you do have to sit here and mark data points, but it is pretty cool once you actually get the video. It doesn't matter where you put your biomarkers as long as they're in a location that isn't going to be moving too much. That's why like I like the waist. Um, you'll probably even get good data as long as you can relatively mark the waist. Um, the fulcrum point where the leg moves is actually a really good point to mark. You just want to be able to recognize those points. If you're moving around and using like the head, you know, that's gonna move differently or a foot that's gonna cycle, which is actually really interesting to see how the foot goes up and down. It's also really important if you're shooting your own video to shoot it as perpendicular as possible so you don't get any parallax error and to make sure that you're not shooting like down from above. You wanna be shooting as straight on as possible. But all, all of this really was shot just with um, an iPhone camera and a tripod, nothing special. Um, the, mo the hardest thing to do is to make the scale bars with the spray paint. All right, so thank you for bearing with me. So you could see that that probably would be, oh, does it work on a treadmill? You could easily do all of this on a treadmill. It's just the person isn't gonna go anywhere, right? So what's really interesting about using natural running is if a person is running naturally, um, you're gonna see how their velocity speed changes over time. And that's just what I wanted to show you here. So. Let's take a look. I've marked uh, Walter's run all the way through the end here. One little last point. Now I can, we can go over here and we can focus now mostly on the graph. So let's just tap up here and say, um, view graph and not look at the video. What you can see that's pretty interesting is I've got X and Y coordinates. Um, for this video, I'm only interested in X. So let's tap on the Y axis and I'm just gonna look at the X. And what's interesting is you can see here, there's this period of time where Walter begins to pick up a little bit of speed and then there's a little bit of difference here. And then after about two seconds, pardon me, after about two seconds, he approaches which is what I would say is a much more um, constant velocity. Uh, we can take a look at that, though, by applying a curve fit over the whole range. And then we can actually move that curve fit. So 
So I could actually highlight, let's say from around two seconds across by clicking and dragging. And you will see that the um, mean velocity there is about 4.953. Cool. Does that make sense? So, but you can have students actually look at different portions of this graph and see how they look different. And usually what you'll see is a weird little peak at the beginning where Walter begins to run fast. And these will all change. You can imagine that if a person is running and sprinting as hard as they can, this slope is going to increase dramatically. Does that make sense? All right, so that I can look at that. Um, you can see that the, the, uh, our square value is pretty good. What about um, just looking at velocity itself? Well, we could do that too. One of the great things about Vernier video analysis is it gives us both um, X and Y, but it also gives us X velocity and Y velocity at the same time. So if I click on Y velocity, turn this off, and then let me do this. Oh, hold on there. I don't want to look at the y velocity. I want x velocity. Thank you. You can see that here is the change in the um, x velocity as a function of time. You can see what looks like capturing at every two samples a second. I've got a little bit of that pause as Walter is jogging. If you were to do this um, at five, five frames per second, that all disappears and this becomes a lot smoother. So that's actually really kind of interesting. Um, but you can see that how the velocity changes here. And you can actually find peak velocity, which is something that we ask you to do. You could say view statistics. And you could see that um, the mean velocity using this screen is 4.31 millimeters uh, meters per second. And we can find out where the max occurs. So the max is 5.92 and that's at 5.739. So that's actually close to the end here. So what's interesting is if you look at this graph, it, one of the things that you might want to do if you're going to be doing this with other students is actually have them run for a longer period. Because if you look at this graph, it looks like it's increasing, it's increasing, but it doesn't quite reach a, a stable velocity. So what that tells me is that Walter was still <clears throat> increasing while he was running. His speed was still increasing even at the end of that video. So other questions so far? That seemed pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at actually um, some of the actual data. So what I was going to do is <clears throat> let's question go for you, um, John, in chat. Oh, why were the two meter ballers on the field? You have to have something on the in the field of view to actually use as your scale. So that's why they were there. That is actually that was actually really important because I had Walter run right along them, so he was running right parallel to them. Um, you could also easily do this if you have lanes on a track, because you're going to have white lanes. You you could already tell like how long that is, or if you had a football field and you had a person running in a given location, you know exactly what ten yards is, the the width of ten yards, so you can measure that. In this case, we wanted to make some really nice video. So I put those red markers on there because red and green gives you the best color contrast. And I wanted you to be able to measure two meters um, very well by just looking at the video. I put both of those on there because when we originally um, put the two meter bars on the field, we had Walter running the other way and we did a whole bunch of experiments and these were the videos that work. Um, so the reason why there's two bars instead of just one is because we just wanted to make sure if someone was running you know, you could, you could measure between them. Um, you also could calculate like how long the distance is between there as well. But those uh, red bars are on the field so that you can actually have a, you can actually set a scale in the video. For any uh, analysis that you're doing with video, you need to have a scale bar there. It's not gonna know the distance um, in the video itself. So let's just take a look at some of the um, sample data. 
So one of the great things is that if you were to actually get the teacher's information, we have a lot of the sample data for you. I mean, in a PDF form. And it goes through notes on how to do the pre-lab discussion, what to talk to students about. But then we actually give you some sample experiments to take a look at, or sample data. So this is a graph right here of, of exposition is time for just jogging. You can see that it's about 4.868 meters per second. And this is doing it at, um... oh, thank you, Viral. Yeah, no, I wish there was a way. Is there a quick way to, to erase all points on a video? Sorry, there isn't a quick way to revert, revert to uh, remove all points on a video, but you can't, well, let's see, hold on. Let's go back. That's a good question. Let's go to the data table and video. At this point, there may not be. Let's see, if you go to edit. Now, I think you have to remove them individually. What I found is it's actually going to be fastest just to um, start over. Uh, that is a great question. One that I've been wanting to do for a long time is joint angle analysis. Um, if any of you think that joint angle analysis would be a great thing to do, please type yes into the chat because that's something that we've talked about for a while. Let me go back to the actual um, experiment here. Sorry there. You guys are great, by the way. Here we go. Um, so we give you what some of the data should look like. So here's a graph of velocity. This is once again sampling at uh, every uh, fifth frame instead of every other frame. Um, and we give you what the velocity should look like. Most importantly, in the instructor manual, um, we also give you information. I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit about what the data would look like for the videos that we've presented for sprinting, running, and jogging. And you can see from this data table that we have here that if you were to go through and analyze these videos, you would see that um, for sprinting, the slope of the graph is much uh, higher. It's a much steeper, which makes sense. So um, the slope of the graph of, of exposition versus time decreases or actually increases the faster you run, which makes sense. Um, mean velocity that you get from that graph uh, shows the same trend. If you're sprinting, mean, mean velocity from the velocity graph also increases. And maximum velocity that you get from the stats field um, also increases. So by all measures, the, pers the individual sprinting is running much faster than they are when they are jogging. But also what's neat is the time to reach max velocity um, also is shorter, which I think is really interesting, which, you would, which would kind of make sense. If you're jogging kind of slowly, it's gonna take you longer to get up to your peak velocity. Whereas if you're sprinting really fast, you're gonna hit that peak velocity for yourself much quicker. Now, just remember that all of the data that I presented here are for Walter. Walter is a, he's over 30, he's a soccer player, he's male. He is not a trained athlete. You could probably get uh, much different data if you actually looked at different athletes. If I were doing this all over again, I would love to look at um, just what they did in that New York Times piece. I would go out to my track team and say, I wanna shoot some video of my distance runners, mid distance runners and sprinters. And you might get completely different data, um, but that would still be super interesting. So I, I wanna stop there for a minute and let me know if, if you understand that. And if you do, then I thought what we would do next is I would show you this really cool feature um, that Verl, we basically were talking about how to look at stride length. And we had a couple of different ideas there. And Verl was the one that came up with this great way to do it. So if you want to, me to show you how to actually find um, step rate, cadence, mean stride length, I can. Files do save with the points and graphs. Yes, they do. Um, great. So what I'll do then next is I'll uh, go next and take a look at how we did this um, next look at step rate and cadence and then um, mean stride length. Now you, you might wanna have to, if, if you're gonna use stride length, how would a student hand this in? That's a good question. There's a couple of different ways that a student could hand it in. 
if you were, you can actually, I believe you can export. So you can export graphs, you can export the video, you can export PDFs, and those can all be saved as PNGs. Um, so you could have a student take all of this and put their whole report in a Google Doc. Great question. Please keep asking questions. You all are terrific. All right, so I'm just gonna start over and we're gonna analyze a stride length. So I'm, but I'm gonna upload the same file. I'm just gonna upload the same video and I'm going to upload jogging. And there, once again, it's, it's uploaded. Um, I'm going to change this to, actually, I'm going to leave it at, uh, I'm going to put it at five frames. I think that'll be fine. I'm just going to do everything the same. I'm going to, so far, I'm going to do everything the same where I'm going to tap on system. I'm going to mark my scale. I know that it should be around, around 140 pixels. There we go. I'm going to set my origin right underneath Walter's foot. I'm going to make sure that this is parallel. And then when I go to add, I just want to, I want to step through these a little bit. Great. I might want to, I'm going to change that back to two. So what, we're, what I'm doing is I'm just looking at Walter's movement and I'm gonna mark each time his foot hits the ground. Oh, thank you, did I forget? I saw that, it happens to me all the time. Let's go back to system. Let's go back to scale. Ah, thank you so much. Two meters, thank you very much. Hey, one nice thing about the application is you do not need to do them in any specific order. You can mark the points first and then adjust your origin and scale. They don't, they're not order dependent. Yeah, it's, it's actually terrific. Um, if you make that mistake, like I have done numerous times, you can always just go back and change that scale to two meters instead of one meter and all of the data is corrected, um, which is great. So let's see, I'm gonna zoom up here. I just wanna see when Walter moves, we're gonna be tracking his right foot. So, if you see his nice white sock there, that's a perfect spot to mark. So I'm gonna mark that as his first step. And then I'm just gonna step the video forward until his foot lands. There it lands again. Then I'm gonna step it forward until his foot lands again. Step forward until his right foot lands again. And the New York Times video, they're, they're marking they're looking at stride length as each time a foot lands. But in this case, I'm just looking at the right foot because I think that's just easiest to measure. Luckily, his white sock is right above the red bar. I think. Great. And what you should be able to see just looking at the graph is if you just look at these dots, you can see that his stride length is increasing and increasing and, and, and increasing as he's jogging. Um, the trick is like, how do you measure that? And if we, once again, if we look here on the graph, I'm just gonna go back here and look at, um, let's get rid of the video. Let's just look at X position. Remember in this case, each step, right, is just where his foot landed. So what we're really interested in is just the difference 
between this point and that point, and then the distance between the difference between this point and that point, and then the difference between this point and that point. Um, we're running out of time here a little bit, but the whole idea and the instructions that are given is if you know the total number of points, so if you count up these points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and you know the duration of the video, where if I were just to say, analyze statistics, I know that the duration Right, the entire um, X duration was six seconds. And I know that there were uh, 11 steps, right? Because it's this is where his foot started. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You can calculate step rate, which would just be um, the total number of steps per unit time, multiply by two for both steps. And then you could multiply by 60 to get steps per minute. Now, what's really great is you can use a calculated column to actually do all of that manually. And we don't have time for me to go through and show that to you all together, but it's actually a pretty neat feature where you can actually go over here, um, you can add a manual column, and I can cut and paste different pieces from this table and then go in later and use a calculated column to subtract this point from that point and this point from that point. So in the instructions, there's a way to actually look at stride length, um, cadence, step rate, and all of that. And since we only have a minute left, um, or no, we have, we have more time for that. I might be thinking wrong. No, we started at noon. So I've got about a minute left. Other questions right now? Let's go to the actual sample data. If, so there's a whole uh, area of the um, of this lab that looks at step rate, cadence, mean stride length. Could you do? That's a good question. Could you could you do anything from an anterior post view? I mean, you could. All that you really need to do to do any type of video analysis is you just have to be analyzing it in one plane, right? So. Um, Yes, you could, that's a really great question. One of the things that I thought would be great to analyze, I just couldn't get the video for you is um, gymnastic events. If you um, think about the parallel bars for male gymnasts where they spin around and around and around, you could actually track their head, their waist and the end of their foot as they're going around that, um, that parallel bar, that bar. And you could look at their angular velocity for each one of those points. Um, there is a tremendous amount that you can do if you have any questions or you can think of anything that you would like to do with video analysis and sports, um, just feel free to uh, email biology at vernier.com and just say, uh, I'd like to talk to John about how to analyze sport videos, um, or uh, I would like to analyze uh, videos related to sport. Just send me any ideas. If, if it goes to biology at vernier.com, and you just say, I want to analyze sport videos. It was great talking to John or Melville. Um, it'll come to me. So other questions? Yes, you can, you can do multi-tracking. It's super cool. Um, one of the things that I thought would be great, that would be really great to do is you can actually analyze it. It takes a long time. And that's one of the um, extensions in this lab is you could actually analyze the foot as it's going through the entire video. And you can look at the X and Y uh, position and velocity of the foot. You could compare the X and Y velocity of the knee. You could even look at the head bouncing up and down if you wanted to. This, is, this has been great. This is one of these things that I've been trying to work on for a long time. Verl has just been terrific. If you have any creative ideas that you'd like to um, look at or analyze support with, or if you have questions on how to get video, feel free to email biology at vernier.com and just say you need to talk to Melville. Thanks. With that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I just wanna thank everyone for coming.